Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you are an international student in USA on an F1 visa and wondering how to apply for STEM OPT extension, you are in the right place. Today, I'm going to explain everything in detail how to apply for STEM OPT extension step by step. So let's get started with the video. So let's get started with the basic eligibility requirements. The first thing is you must be currently in your active OPT date. And the second requirement is uh, your degree must be a STEM approved degree from your college. And the third requirement is uh, you must your employer must be a e-verified employer. And the fourth basic requirement is uh, the job you are doing currently must be directly related to your STEM degree. These are the basic eligibility requirements to apply for your STEM OPT. So uh, before applying, we, we must get these documents. Uh, the first document is completed I-983 form, which should which is which consists of training plan, all the other details I'm going to show you in this video. It should be signed by you and your employer. And the second one is copy of your STEM degree and transcripts from your college. This should this board should be official, not like screenshot or anything else. So make sure you get your official STEM degree and official transcripts from your college. And the third document is your current EAD with front and back images. The next thing follows your passport bio page, visa copy page and recent I-94. And the final document is your recent I-20 with STEM OPT recommendation signed by your DSO and you. These are the basic documents to apply for the STEM. So you guys must be wondering what is I-983 form and where you can get this. So the I-983 form is the form which is filled by your employer and you to get uh, your I-20 approval from your college. The I-983 form consists of how you are working on your official job, how they are training you and how your degree is currently related to it. So it helps the college and USCIS to make the decision for your STEM OPT approval. So I'm going to show you and I'm going to explain you which details you're going to be filled and by your employer. So you can, as you can see, the first field is your name and the second is your stu student email address. Most people confuse here, like you should put your college ID, but no, don't put your college ID. This should be your personal ID or the USCS email ID, which you're using. And the name of the school recommending OPT which is your university name and the other, the other field is also same your university name coming to the service school code which you can find in your i20 i'm going to show you give me a second so you can find your student i mean your college service id yeah here like you can see this field yeah this is your college service code you can fill this here directly and coming to the designated dso i mean <laughs> dso contact details you can find uh, in your college website or in your email while you're applying applying for your OPT, you'll get these details over there. And student service ID, you know what is student service ID. And your uh, STEM OPT requested period. The from date should be uh, the current OPT expiration date after the day. And two is two years from the from date. Uh, for this, I would say uh, every college gives you a OPT sheet calculator like our college gave me, I'm going to show you this, uh, like this sheet uh, where you can enter your current OPT end date. So it gives you uh, the STEM OPT required requested period dates. So like this, my end date is like 7th uh, July 24th, 2025. If I enter this date, they're going to give me like what is my start date, new start date and new end date. So I use this calculator sheet. Uh, make sure your college has also, has also like these sheets in with you. So get those sheets and get the dates accurately because this is the main important part of the application. Your date must be accurate or else your application gonna get rejected. So make sure your dates are right. Coming to the other part, uh, your qualifying major and classification of institutional program CIP code. This you can find in your, again, same I-20. So I'm gonna show you again. As you can see, uh, here like the major this is the your major degree and this is the CIP code you should fill these two things over there after filling what is the level of degree you are qualifying mine is master's degree so everyone is master's degree only so and degree award date you can find it in your transcripts or official degree which you have uh, uh, from the college based on prior degree uh, mark this field as no because we are getting this from our master's degree not from our bachelor's degree 
so this is no option your ead number just your ead number you have to fill it here and signature of your student make sure you sign this and your name while you're submitting this to your college coming to section 3 this is all completed by the employer you don't need to worry about, about these things just leave it blank and send it to your employer they'll cover all those details and section 5 is a confusion part because it needs to be completed by you and your employer so make uh, a good attention here uh, student name this is this should be filled by you employer name leave it blank and the site name all these things leave it blank they will fill those and coming to this uh, the rules uh, i think your employer knows how to fill all those things so just leave it blank don't fill these details your employer will take care of these things and coming to section six uh, this is also filled by your employer so just leave it blank so make sure you don't fill this any of these details while sending it to your employer and uh, tell the employer also don't don't need to fill these details so yeah these are the basic details you need to fill in your i-983 form and after filling these details and signed by your, you and your employer you need to save this form and send it to your college so uh, this is the form uh, for my college so i guess your college also has the same or uh, you should fill online or itself our college has this form so you need to fill these basic details so these are the basic documents you need to apply for requesting your i20 stem opt extension and coming to the next step after getting your new i20 just head it to your uh, uscis website and log in into your account after getting into your account you can see on this page uh, go to my account section and here you can see this option file a form online click on this after getting here just select the drop down like go to i765 form application for employment authorization just click on this after clicking on this what is your eligibility criteria first mopt extension just click on the drop down and you can see this c3c code which is for the stem extension request just click on this uh, you can find uh, read all these basic details just for your safety and just click on start form you will get redirected to the page and just click start after starting this the basic page will ask what is your eligibility criteria just click on this drop down and select c3c stem extension this is for your stem extension degree only just click on this after entering this what is your employer name as listed in here verify like i'm just entering them random like google so just ignore this enter your employer's name as an uh, listed in e-verify portal next uh, e-verify number of your employer i'm just entering random number make sure you get your e-verify number from your employer and enter here would you like to request premium processing just select no what is reason for applying the reason for applying is renewal of permission to accept employment make sure you click this option and have you ever previously filed i-765 yes this is someone assisting you with completing this form application just click no and next what is your legal name all these things i'm gonna just enter my basic details Have you used any other name since birth? No. Your current phone number, I'm gonna enter just random number. Your email ID and your current mailing address. Make sure you give your latest address where you're living because your new AAD will mail to this address only. Is this your current mailing address the same as your physical address? If your both addresses are same, just click S. Yes. If not, you can enter by clicking no, your new, like the physical address. So yeah, mine is same, so I'm clicking yes. And the next step is basic details. I'm gonna fill over here. <laughs> so 
Wow. UCS is so smart. If you are entering your date of birth wrong, it's giving you <laughs> error because it, it has, it already has your date of birth. So I can't fake it here. So yeah, the next step is citizenship. Mine is India and your recent I-943 arrival number. I'm just entering some random number. Your latest arrival date, place of arrival, where you arrived in USA. When was Los Angeles? International airport. State of The status of arrival is your current, like this is F1 visa. So it's F1 obviously. Yeah. Your passport number, enter your passport number. Make sure you enter your correct passport expiration date. The country issued your passport. Mine is India, so I'm just entering India. What is your current immigration status category, which is F1? and your service id for your entire your correct service id so coming to the next is it's asked for your a number which we already have while applying for our opt form because it provides us a alien number so it automatically fills this number or you can get in your approval notice of your opt form which you applied before a year back so you can find it over there and the case number which is filled automatically by this website click as yes because we get ssn with our opt only if you don't have your ssn while working on campus or any other things so yeah do you want to issue and click this option as no so after clicking next it takes you to this page where you need to upload your evidence like photos and all the documents you gather so coming to the first section it asks for your passport size photo which you can take by yourself with clear lighting no shadows on your background, etc. Or else you can go to CVS or Walgreens nearby and you can just take their passport size photo and upload right here. And we also have a tool where you can crop your photo to correctly get those requirements. So make sure you check this tool also and click next. And here it asks for your form I-94 and your passport. So make sure you upload both of these documents and select for I-94, select form I-94 and for passport, select passport or travel document and click on next. After that process, it takes you to this page where you need to upload your current EAD document, your front and back images. And with your EAD, you need to upload your visa as well, visa copy from your passport page. So yeah, make sure you upload all these three documents and click on next. And here it's asked for your new STEM I-20. Make sure you upload your I-20 with your sign and your DSO sign. Don't forget your sign on your I-20. Sometimes we'll forget our sign in our I-20. So make sure you sign and record it, uh, upload it. <laughs> Sorry. And click on next. Here it's asked for your college degree. Uh, make sure you upload your official college degree from your college and your transcripts as well. And coming to the next section, it starts for institution accreditation. Basically, this section is for those whose OPT is based on different college and STEM, OT, STEM OPT is based on different college. So for us, we don't need this because our OPT and STEM OPT is based on the same degree and the same college. So just click on next. It gives you a warning. Just ignore it and click on next. Additional information or responses. We don't need anything. So just you can leave this section as blank and click on next. After completing the process, you'll get to the end page where it's asked for the, it show you the fees like $470 and just click on next. Just review your details. It will show you all your details you filled over here and just surf through these details and make sure everything is correct. And finally, go to scroll down this section and click on next. You need to agree this and click this button. After clicking next, it it will ask for your signature. <laughs> so yeah, you need to check on this box and 
write your full name here after writing your full name it will uh, the, this box will be enabled and clicking on next it will redirect to your payment portal where you can pay by using your debit card or your bank account details or credit card anything else so after paying your payment gets successfully done uh, the process will be completed and your form will be submitted successfully and you'll get the message and your mail to your personal email id this is the whole process how to apply for your stem opt extension make sure you follow this process and get your stem opt extension correct and just some suggestions make sure you fill your i three form correctly like your roles and what your job related to your stem degree because that's the area where mainly uscis checks your application because it should match your current degree so make sure you fill those details right and follow this process you'll get your stem opt approved within like two to three months because this is the general process for premium processing it usually takes 15 days so thank you for watching this video let me know if you have any uh, like questions or any uh, anything else like problems or issues related to this process i'll help i'll try to help my best